and welcome back to another review. Today I thought we'd mix things up and have a look at some more anime. So I thought we'd have a look at Project Aiko, um, released in, well, come out in 1986, I believe. Um, a lot of people think, you know, the, the title is no coincidence at all in um, regards to sort of the Jackie Chan Project A. Um, this was very much sort of, it was called Project A as sort of like a working title and the title just stuck. Um, this, if you've never seen this film before, if it's new to you, um, I strongly advise you to check it out, especially if you like sort of old school 80s sort of anime. Um, but yeah, we're getting into this today. It's one of my favourites from, uh, from sort of back in the day. Um, I, I believe there is a Blu-ray box set with all the movies in them, which I haven't got, unfortunately. But I'll just be reviewing, uh, looking at the film today, which I got on DVD. Um, just one of my favourites. Um, so made in 1986. This is a crazy, wacky, zany, funny film. Um <laughs> that doesn't really make a lot of sense. It um, it just basically takes the Mickey out of various other anime and series that were going on at the time. There's various homages uh, referencing various uh, other anime. Um, in many ways, the film can be just seen um, as like a parody. Um, I definitely think that's the way to look at this film. I think that's pretty much what was intended with this film. I'm not too familiar with um, the history regarding this film. A lot of you out there may know a lot more than me. Um, I can only just talk about um, sort of my experiences with the film and because I saw it years and years ago um, had it on VHS and everything like that um, this this was I say a film I remember having it must have been say mid to late 90s or something I ha remember having it on VHS after I saw a trailer for it I, it was on a I must it must have been on like a Dominion Tank Police VHS I had or something that was released by Manga Entertainment because I used to have a lot of manga um, when I say manga I mean um, the company manga that released anime here in the uk um which was just big 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 stuff because it was sort of all new to us at the time and i remember it was on a trailer it was it was a trailer for it one of the uh, things and I, it was just this red-headed um girl in like a sailor suit beating up giant robots and i was like yeah i want to watch that uh, you know that looks something i could get into um you know, beating the crap out of all these rob robots. And I was like, yep, I want to watch that. That looks one for me. Um, much, like I say, much like Dominion Tank Police, it was a fantastic time in the 90s when uh, manga were releasing um, all these classic. The film had sequels and spin-offs, um, but we'll be looking um, at sort of the original today. Uh, so basically the film opens with this, this like space station getting blown up and like an alien aircraft impacts the Earth. Of course, you in this film... Like with many anime in the 80s and early 90s, you get that classic sort of cheesy, not always cheesy, but that poppy sort of, you know, music that goes that comes along, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on what your tastes are um, with the anime. Um, Latin, basically, this spaceship has crashed and landed on Graviton City and killed like 6 million people. So that's quite a big, you know, fatality right there. And then basically they rebuild the city um, and then we meet Aiko, who always, she's always late for school. She's never late on time. She's starting at a new school. Um, and as I say, red hair, sailor suit, um, and her best friend, Seiko. <coughs> and the first thing we learn about Aiko when we see her is she can run super, super duper fast, right? She can run super duper. She's always late, as I say. She's a bit all over the place. They're starting a new school, her and Seiko. Seiko's like her best friend. And um, then, we, like I say, she can run really fast, she can jump really high, she can basically grab Seiko and just speed it along the road. So you're already getting a flavour for what kind of anime this is going to be, um, even, like I say, even while pulling Seiko along. And then once at school, at their new school, we meet Biko, who is like this rich, spoiled student who has like a really severe crush on um, Seiko. So the name's Aiko, Biko, Seiko. And... Yeah, so she's got a big thing for her, and she wants to. T she's like, but Seiko's like obsessed with Aiko. Uh, Biko wants to get Seiko, so yeah, this is going to get really confusing. <laughs> this, this is going to get really confusing. Me talking about their names, I will try and cut down if I just say the red-headed one and the blonde one. But yeah, um, so yeah, she's got a thing for Seiko. Um, I I will say straight away, Seiko is annoying. Um, I'm watching this. Um, this is from the dubbed um if you got the i'd probably advise anybody out there to watch probably the original japanese but in the dub version especially she is really really annoying like she cries all the time she doesn't stop talking 
she doesn't pay attention in class everything about her just like she gets her own way no matter what it's just like there's no redeeming qualities to this character whatsoever um but every like both of them especially um Biko seems to be absolutely obsessed with her um then after being like late back from lunch after like their first day they both get ill because um Seiko made them both lunch and they both get a bit of food poisoning because it absolutely tasted rotten so they come back from lunch and Aiko ends up the one being get punished and she gets tasked with like cleaning the classroom and then another thing we learn from her is that she can like she's got super strength so she's picking like two desks up at a time and just like lobbing them like just cleaning up the classroom she can just pick up like really heavy stuff and just chuck it around like it's nothing and in her head in her demeanor she doesn't think she's doing anything that fantastic she's just picking that stuff up like oh you know what what you know what's so impressive she like when she's running to school she doesn't know she's running really fast she just thinks it's normal she's like you know i'm just doing my thing here um so yeah we, we learn that she's got super strength really super speed um then she gets picked on by Mari, and I absolutely love this scene because it's so blatantly a rip-off of Kenshiro from Fist of the North Star. It's basically, if you imagine Kenshiro uh, from Fist of the North Star, but with pigtails, that gives you some of an idea <laughs> of what this scene is like. And that's what I love about this, um, uh, like I say, this anime. If, you, if you're very familiar with your 80s anime, you'll find a lot to enjoy here because, like I say, it is very much a parody. It's not... Um, it's not taken, it's definitely not taken seriously. It definitely doesn't make sense. As a matter of fact, I read on Wikipedia there was somebody that says um, the plot's hard to follow, or there was somebody that wrote somewhere that the plot's hard to follow. It's like, it's really not. What part of the plot do you think is hard to follow? It's not meant to be taken that seriously. I do, you know, if you're reading this, if you're, sorry, reading this, if you're watching this film and you're thinking, Bearing in mind how nutty and zany this film is and how wacky it is. If you're watching this and you're thinking, do you know what, I walked out of that and there were so many plot holes, was, that didn't make sense or the plot was confusing. Um, you're probably watching the wrong type of film. You're probably not, you're probably going into this, you know, probably expecting something totally different. And that's that's not fair on the movie because it's not it's not that kind of film. It's not that kind of anime. So, yeah, which just annoys me with something like this. When somebody said, well, the plot, you know, didn't, you know, it's confusing or it's got more twists and turns in it. That was it. They say it's got twists and turns or something. Or it just, it, I just think, what are you on about? What are you on about? So, yeah, we've got the dresses. This one, this one of the girls, she looks like Kenshiro from Fist of the North Star, which is quite funny. Then, then. The, the theme music to this uh, Project Echo, if it's on certain parts, not all of it, but it reminds me there's certain notes um, phrasing with some of the, the theme song that sounds a bit, a bit like Never Ending Story, um, if you've ever seen that movie. Then Echo and Seiko go to the cinema, and this is another thing where it just gets... Not not weird, but you just think, what's going on? They go to the cinema, and they're watching like this horror film, um, and they, they sort of do a parody of a horror film within this film. And um, the, 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 like, the monster, the creature in it is Colonel Sanders from KFC. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is the kind of film you're watching here. This is the kind of film. It's like, it's like oh, my God, it's the Colonel. And the Colonel's like this. He's the, an, like the antagonist of this movie, whatever they're watching. It's the most bizarre thing you'll ever see. Um, so they go to the cinema, watch that, and then... Basically, they get out and this like sort of Gerda falls from like this production site and it's going to land on Aiko and Seiko. Again, Aiko just puts her arm up, stops the Gerda from falling on her. People are like, wow, God, look at her strength again. She doesn't think she's doing anything amazing. She's totally unaware that she's, you know, she's like, what's the matter? I've just, I've just had to stop that because it's falling on my head. She has no idea that she's doing anything that incredible. Um, and also, at the, well, at the same time as this all going on, it's not even in this film like there's character development either. It's just stuff that fun stuff that happens is what it is. The whole, rooted at the core of it is just a love triangle. That's what it is. That is at the core, but it just gets it just gets madder and madder as it goes on. And it, like I said, it's all crammed in like about eighty minutes. Um, so that happens, and then th there's this other person called D who has been like monitoring the pair every morning as they go to school. And basically, it always gets run over in the process. And at one point, the aliens who uh, she's reporting to, because all the aliens are female, um, 
they say that I love it because they say you, you're getting in more like much worse physical shape every time we see you because every morning Aiko's sort of like barging through her just like absolutely storing through so she's getting totally annihilated um, the whole time when this is going on with Aiko, Biko and Seiko again just talking about the first film not talking about the sequels not talking about the spin-offs just talking about the first film um, it, where their parents are or anything like that is that you know again that's neither here nor there you know that's you know who cares I mean but again you'd think where are the parents and all this but doesn't matter does it it doesn't matter we're just here to have a good time um, turns out they sort of all know each other Aiko, Biko and Seiko from uh, each other early on from when they were younger because Aiko saved Seiko from like this wolf that escaped from the zoo and it made like Biko super jealous and I love it when she's trying to sort of remind her look you remember when you saved her from that wolf and she's like yeah there was this girl there she was you know was it um blinko burko and it's like you know she can't get it in her head that it's biko she does, just can't figure it out you know that it was her so biko basically starts to invent loads of she starts to invent loads of robots and mechs um to sort of deal with aiko every morning of school and again this is the this is where the film could have gone on and on and on like i could have watched biko turning up to school every single day with a different robot or a different way to take Aiko out and it failing miserably. I mean, that in itself is just entertaining. Um, so, yeah, so she invents like this robot with, and with one punch, Aiko absolutely just destroys this thing. Then she builds an even bigger one and awesomely, Aiko just sweeps it and the thing just falls on its back, which is absolutely, you know, absolutely love that bit. Um, I mean, bearing in mind that she builds these designs, all these things in one night, um, Biko. It's not like she's she's like a whole year's past or anything like that. Not to mention money and resources and time and effort. <laughs> she gets them all done in one night. So, you know, she's very, very, you know, talented to just be I mean some of these things, they're about like 15, 20 stories high, some of these robots. Um, you know, so there's another funny bit <laughs> where um there's these giant big towering robots outside the school because obviously Biko's trying to deal with Aiko again like saying you know I deserve Seiko she's mine I'm going to have her and the teacher comes by on like a moped and she's like come on finish your talk later girls like <laughs> reason and logic she's not like there's two massive robots outside the school gates it's just like um, you know the reason and logic just doesn't apply here at all it just goes completely utterly out the window Aiko is more concerned about not being late for school. That's more That's more what's important here. So we find out that Seiko is actually a princess um, who this group of alien women who look like men has come basically to bring back or kidnap or both or neither. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Um, Biko and Aiko have had this massive fight with like Biko's new armour, going through walls, smashing the school up, missiles, you name it. Loads of destruction here that actually starts in the school grounds. As I say, they're going through walls and buildings. Then it goes into like the streets, into the village, into the town. Um, the alien craft comes to Seiko, but the two keep fighting and fighting, and then um, they must work together basically to save Seiko. And there's my favourite part of the anime where I think it was probably the thing that was on the trailers that or the one I remember, the bit I remember on the trailers, um, is when Aiko's running up the missiles. So she's got this alien craft showering down missiles on her, and it's it's so awesome. Like again, it can only happen in anime. Red-headed girl, sailor suit, running up, um, running up the, like um, these missiles that are coming down on her, hopping from one missile to the other to get nearer the you know the spaceship. Absolutely freaking genius. Love that. It looks so damn cool. It looks really good. And I said, I think that was one of the things on the trailer that I thought, yeah, I've got to watch that. That looks the thing. That looks absolutely incredible. Um, uh, I remember a friend of mine who used to like, I um, don't know if any of you remember or heard of the series Dirty Pair Flash. He was a big fan of that. And we were both sort of watching. I remember we were watching Dirty Player Flash and this uh, as well at the same time. Just, you know, just classic times that you remember. Um, the the captain of the ship as well keeps on going on and on about booze as well <laughs> for no reason, just keeps on going on about drink. Um, so they rescue Seiko, and that's it really. That's it. They, they basically they have this fight, Seiko gets kidnapped, then they just basically team up to go and rescue her, and then it ends with sort of Biko, seeing Aiko and Seiko come to school, and that's it. Then the credits come up. It's a very 
sort of don't have to concentrate anime and like I say if you like that person that said online uh, the plot's confusing like what film are you watching what film are you watching but this is the kind of film that made me fall in love with like sort of anime back in the 90s this is the kind of film that makes me um, you know there's still classic great anime being made nowadays but um, especially being that's probably my age I suppose but I'm just a big fan of that 80s early 90s anime um, that you know where sort of the um, it just there's just seemed a big sense of fun in some of the productions and no more so than Project Aiko. Um, just absolutely, uh, you know, it's not like it's groundbreakingly brilliant, uh, but it's just entertaining. It's just really, really entertaining. And like I say, there are sequels, which I can review hopefully as well. Um, but then there's a spin off as well where it's sort of set. Um, same characters but it's sort of set in a different universe but um, for the original I think I think you're sort of hard pressed to beat it I think it's very much um, I think as the series went on it sort of become like they do so many series do they become they end up becoming the thing they set out actually mocking if you know what I mean they end up becoming a bit of a parody of a parody if that makes sense um, it's a it's kind of film that can only come out of Japan, like back in the day. It's bonkers, mad, silly, stupid, and doesn't make much sense. But when the film is meant to be a parody, right, who cares? I will, like I said, I will say about the dub that I've always seen it. If you're going to give this film a go, maybe worth checking out the Japanese version. Um, and it's just well worth checking out just some old school 80s um, anime, um, especially if you've not ever seen Project Aiko. So, um, yeah, check it out. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you again soon.